Howdy folks and <clears throat> Coffee and Tools Monday and we're doing some hack job stuff around the house today again. Uh, this time we're looking at speakers. This is a set of bows and I checked the internet before I got into this one to try to re do a repair on it. I'll show it to you in large scale format so you can see what's going on but uh, bow speaker, we're, I've got some pioneers here. They do the same thing as the bows so this will be a lot easier to see though. Basically, this is what happens. You can see what's happened right there. Uh, all this uh, rubber foam on the outside that helps to support the speaker, keep it in the center and all that, plus uh, it's part of your bass speaker, <laughs> has rotted off, rotted away. And a lot of times when you get to a situation like this, they end up at the junkyard or they get thrown away. And they can be repaired. These can be fixed and renewed so they're back to good old, you know, Pioneer 10-inch speakers. Same with the Bose. The Bose situation was uh, frustrating. And then the reason is, is a lot of people uh, on the internet I checked had some really screwy ideas about how to get this grill off. Most destroyed the grill, so it was like end of the deal. And I really didn't appreciate that because I want to keep the uh, nice looking grill on here when I get finished. If I repair these speakers, I want them to look decent again like they did. And this particular set is really hard to remove Unless you're old school and you know the old secrets of old school, so let's talk about <laughs> let's let's show you what goes on here. Ah, come in closer. So here's a pair of the Bose speakers, and the problem this one here is fine, so I really don't need to take it apart or do anything with it. So I'm just going to set it aside right now. But here's the big secret, and what it is is there's tabs. Here, I'll just pop that off. There we go. There's tabs on the grill and you really need to know or note where those tabs are and then here's the old guy secret to getting those things off they're glued in by bows so I just used a little Zippo lighter fluid and I just drained a little bit and wash it down the grill where each of these tabs are located and let it soak up a little bit only takes about a minute or two and then the next tool you're going to want to use is something wide like a wide paddle or something you know in this case this and and then just get in between the grill and just start lifting a little bit once it comes loose the whole thing should pop now there is one other issue that you're going to run into that's kind of hard to deal with because of the way it was constructed is these two tabs on the inside you might bend them a little bit but you can bend this this is a metal grill so it can be bent back into shape afterwards so it's really this is like a restore, you know, restoration project where you know you can put this grill back on afterwards, and it's going to look nice again. And the reason we're trying to get in here is because this is what happens, and you can sort of see the the uh, outline here. And I'll just remove it because it's just loose. But yeah, there's there's the problem right there, and it's all shot. You know, it's gone, and that's pretty common apparently with these Bose speakers, especially if they go into storage and they're not well kept somewhere that's all humidity controlled and whatever. They're saying, they're telling me in the industry anyway, so you know, that they, they just come apart. And here's a 10 inch system out of a large uh, speaker stack from Pioneer. And you, like I said, I've already cleaned all the nasty rubber off and I still have to clean all this junk off here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just use like a 3M scrubby pad and I'm gonna go around this first and clean it up. So we'll, clean that up first and then we'll come back. So here's the glue they gave me and what I did was I made a small bead and took my finger all the way around the edge of the paper then I dropped the gasket, the new gasket, in place then I went around with my finger and created pressure all the way around here and even clamped it like from underneath to try to make sure that this is laying down really good into the speaker. You will get and that the best way to check it is just do one of these with the speaker. And you will get some, some spots that are going to rise up a little bit on you. And you're going to have to push them down to get them. And what happens is it will get tacky and it will settle down, hopefully. So there we have it. That's the, that's the first part of this operation. Now, the second part, there's a couple of things we could do. Uh, I guess we call it... Uh, old school style and just put this ring on and test the speaker because this ring virtually traps the outer rubber so it doesn't necessarily have to be glued in place theoretically because this ring keeps all the pressure against the rubber on the outside 
So we only have to glue this inside part. The real bad thing is, is this. We need to get that speaker has got to be in the center when this is locked up. If it's not in the center, this whole job would just be a, almost a waste of time. Man, this is looking really good. Pretty happy with the results. So we'll uh, stop here for the moment, and then I'm going to test the speaker. Now, this is the same I principle and the same problem that we have with this little this little guy here, the uh, Bose that we were talking about earlier. And this is why it distorts and everything else is because all this is blown out. As far as holding the speaker in the center goes, uh, similar problem, sort of, but not really, because this speaker is so small, it sort of keeps itself in the center, where a big 10-incher here can kind of wander around a little bit. So for now, we're going to call that a, uh, we're going to stop here and let the glue, glue harden up. So here's the, <laughs> here's, here's the, here's the Pioneer speaker. Okay. So here's the Pioneer speaker system that these came out of. And uh, I've got, yeah, I've got one speaker. Uh, now it's fully assembled. The glue seems to be reasonably, actually hardening up pretty quick. It's supposed to be full cure 24 hours. It's only been, I don't know, an hour, maybe a couple of hours at the most. So I'm gonna, I went ahead and put the ring uh, back on, which helps lock the outer boom boom speaker into place here. And all we gotta do is screw it down, well, connect the wires <laughs> and screw it down. Now I made a note about the wiring and the speakers are kind of, they're, they say polarity, but there's really this sort of like no polarity to speakers. I don't know how else to explain it, but we've got the two wires to hook up here, which I will go ahead and wire these back in, or just put the tabs back on, whatever. And, uh, ooh, wow, that's quite a bite. And now we have uh, this. So now all I gotta do is put it in screws, put the grills back on, and we should be good to go, I hope. Yeah, and I really didn't like the way Pioneer uh, did these because the screws are right on the edge of the, the cut of the wood, which means there's virtually very little strength there. So you don't wanna, you wanna try not to, uh, yeah, over push these screws into place too much because there isn't a lot of, uh, yeah, there isn't a lot of playroom there, so. And I don't want to strip anything. So there we go. Super nice and tight. And a speaker grill. Why did I do this? I have no idea because I'll be honest with you. I have no, uh, I don't really have any use for these right now. Mm. Okay. And I think that that was it. Okay. That will stand her up. <laughs> They're heavy. Old Pioneer speakers. Uh, rosewood cabinet, uh, rosewood and vinyl cabinet, yeah, and uh, there's a fellow that wrote us a long time ago, and I really like what he called it. Uh, he called this material, I believe he called it crumble board, because I think that's all these things are made of. Why they, you know, ooh, rosewood on the outside, it's, it's crumble board, come on, you know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this was uh, a hack for Monday. And now all I gotta do is figure out a way to, I need to find an old amplifier so I can uh, pump something through here for sound and just see if we, we have boom boom anymore. I think, I think they'll be fine, but. So the uh, speaker system worked out great and it's on to another project, but yeah, that's our hack for today. Hey, five bucks at a yard sale and because it was rotten and they didn't work. And uh, I spent $17 on the kit for this particular uh, size. I would give you a link in the description below for the speaker kits, but I can't because you might have 11 inch, 12 inch, you might have eight inch, you, you, you might have whatever size speakers. Uh, I did find them on eBay, so I'll just mention that even though you gotta watch yourself when you're shopping on eBay. But I found them for like $17 for the kit, and I now have two perfectly really good Pioneer speakers. And as it turns out, this Pioneer uh, stereo actually works really well. I had to hook up a temporary antenna to get some signal in so I could just, you know, check out the big, the big sound. And yeah, they have that classic old big sound. 
of speakers that uh, I guess I missed from when I was a kid. But hey, thanks again for watching Coffee and Tools, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe. More hacks coming up, but today, Monday's hack, yeah, fixing old speakers. All right. Adios, guys, and over and out.